My name is Zachary Smith. I uh, lead the Edge Infrastructure Services Group over here at Equinix. It's part of our digital services business unit. And what we do is help customers access the kind of global reach and neutral ecosystems available here at Equinix, um, but to do so programmatically, hopefully in minutes, not in months, across our 240 plus data centers and 70 markets. A lot of carriers build their infrastructure or access their customers through Equinix's platform. And what we've seen is a real um, desire and movement towards more agility, um, being able to innovate faster, being able to do so more programmatically um, and do so in more places. And so for me, um, helping Telco Cloud is providing that kind of global reach. Telecoms need to be in a lot of places. Um, they're kind of the most demanding infrastructure customers from a location perspective. Um, they need, they have a lot of opinion, mainly because they uh, are, are trying to do some pretty high intensity workload, like push billions of packets or, um, you know, power the underlying rails of our digital life. Um, and so they have some demanding applications um, and they need to do so in increasingly competitive markets. Um, so they're looking at places to do efficiency and automation. So to me, it's bringing those kind of powerful infrastructure primitives with the production use cases, and I'm going to call it industrialized use cases of networks um, together. Telco is usually a multi-tenant application. Um, so running multiple customers, multiple circuits, multiple VLANs, multiple things, multiple CNFs or VNFs, um, you know, there's natural a tendency there um, to, to build in multi-tenancy. And so having a single tenant infrastructure product like bare metal really allows the carrier to introduce the level of tenancy that they need in their application. Um, and so what Equinix focuses on with our Equinix Metal platform um, and our other digital infrastructure services is how can we provide, you know, kind of highly programmatic single tenant infrastructure primitives so that our customers who are either carriers or service providers or digital enterprises that are starting to you know be able to assemble and use infrastructure that they can take these components and turn it into the services that they um, are experts at running or building um, so i think it's just a nice uh, entry point for um, easier than uh, delivering your own racks and cages, but still enough control um, that you can control the amount of tenancy you're introducing into your app. We've kind of just been through this, one of our partners, Orange, who's deploying 160 global locations for their virtual pop infrastructure. And what we've seen is a need for really powerful um, hardware. You have to have consistency around um, the location, around the workload that you're gonna run. Um, and then you have to have programmability. Um, right now, deploying infrastructure in a hundred places, maybe in one place you could do so manually, maybe in three or four, you could kind of get away with it, but in 160, it's not possible. And so at the scale that carriers are working at, um, they really have to rely and, and, and use automation. So I think automation is a primitive that is kind of a non-negotiable. And that can be as simple as, um, I need to check on the status of a thing, like a circuit or a virtual connection. What is the status? When will it be delivered? It has to be a programmatic question versus a human one. Um, or it can be as complex as auto scaling and providing access to, you know, thousands of cores of physical compute. Um, so I think automation is that second one. And then the third is, is, is ecosystem access. You know, carriers are in the business of connecting um, customers and enterprises and, 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 and partners. And so having easy and neutral access to other networks, clouds, and businesses, I think is the other key requirement. Connectivity networks are part of everything that we do. Um, they're being pushed to have more responsive, localized, high performance, and low cost networks um, that are often responding with um, the velocity and kind of speed of machines instead of with humans. <laughs> um, so it's not somebody requesting something, it's some thing requesting something programmatically. Um, and so I think that that demand is really pushing, um, you know, this mood towards moves towards cloudification, which I just read is just a supreme amount of automation. And that's why the movement towards virtualization and the investments that companies like Orange are making around virtual pop infrastructure so that they can take it wherever they need to. We use the phrase, move infrastructure at software speed um, and they're moving networks at software speed. Um, and then the second thing is really about like, you can't have edge without low latency breakout. And so the network has to terminate the right traffic in the right place, um, hopefully so that you can bring some of the intelligence closer to where the data or the user is happening. So if you can't break out that network locally, 
to do some intelligent processing to it to filter out what you need to send back to your you know big cloud applications or some other data warehouse then you really don't get the benefit of putting your infrastructure um, you know closer to the edge so I think there's a real tight coupling um, between having carriers like Orange be able to bring their networks and terminate them in hundreds of places, as well as having applications and ecosystems nearby to provide that intelligence.